Chapter 36 The Calm of an Errand Boy The man-eating monsters made weird sounds with their mouths as they moved. They abruptly started running towards the band when the strongest and tallest man-eating monster pointed at them with its club. Strings of magical incantations sounded out before the monsters had even begun to approach. Bundles of bone arrows flew towards the man-eating monsters out of thin air and those above the level of magic apprentice even fired out a stronger incantation Bone Spears. Bone Spears was a necromancy magic similar to bone arrows but one had to be at least at the level of a novice mage in order to master it. The power of the spell was also slightly stronger than bone arrows. Bone arrows and spears flew out simultaneously through the air making straight for the eight man-eating monsters. These eight monsters knew to dodge the attack as they ran but they weren't a race known for speed. Some were still hit by the bone arrows and spears, except their bodies were exceedingly durable. The bone arrows only caused them to cry out with pain and temporarily affected their speed but couldn't pierce their bodies. Only the bone spears left bloody holes on their bodies with green blood trickling out of them. The eight monsters continued to get hurt as they approached but none of them fully lost the ability to fight. They crashed into the outer defensive perimeter and started attacking the inner ring. Han Sha Oh stayed within the defensive ring in an orderly unruffled manner. His face full of calm he looked coldly upon the fast approaching man-eating monsters and slowly sized up their battle strength. Let the dark creatures attack. Fanny gave a great shout as her beautiful features turned grave as she saw the man-eating monsters drawing near. Everyone started directing the outer ring of dark creatures to attack as Fanny's words rang out. The summoned ghouls, skeletal warriors, zombie warriors and hate warriors all held their positions firmly striking out only when the man-eating monsters closed the distance. But the man-eating monsters were tall and buff and their muscles provided them with a tough defense. Apart from the hate warriors which could actually cause some damage with their metal clubs the effect of the other dark creatures attacks was quite limited. The ghouls and skeletal warriors were particularly ineffective. They were immediately pulverized beneath the studded clubs with the skeletal warriors falling to pieces and the ghouls dying in a mass of flesh and gore. The zombie warriors were more durable and could take multiple hits from the studded clubs but they too staggered around weakly after being hit a few times. These damned man-eating monsters are a bit tough to deal with. Gene started to worry as he saw the outer perimeter of dark creatures begin to collapse and yet the man-eating monsters remained standing even when bleeding profusely from various magic attacks. Hold the line. Don't let them break through otherwise we'll surely die if we face them in close combat. Fanny called out loudly a trace of anxiety appearing on her beautiful face as well. Rounds of bone spears continued to appear as she chanted her spells. They honed in on one particular man-eating monster with the final spear piercing the monster through the eye and penetrating its head with one stroke. This caused the man-eating monster wobble and then fall lifelessly to the ground. The remaining seven man-eating monsters seemed to lose their minds after their comrade had been killed. It was like the two with spears had been activated as they cried out with weird whooshing sounds and suddenly threw their spears out. The spears drew a curve in the air and whistled sharply as they pinned down the two hate warriors. The two hate warriors were the strongest meat shields in the outer perimeter. Although they didn't immediately lose the ability to move their movements became slower now that their bodies had been impaled. They were pretty much ineffectual after two man-eating monsters started marking their every move. At this moment only two hate warriors and six zombie warriors were left in the outer perimeter. The zombie warriors were inferior to the hate warriors in every way and the pressure on the former had increased with the hate warriors being impaled by spears. Two zombie warriors had fallen in the span of a moment. What to do what to do? Will these damned man-eating monsters eat us? Oh my gosh why are their bodies so durable? The bone arrows have no effect when they hit. Screwed we're all screwed. We should have gone back yesterday wa. Wa. Rounds of depressed complaints and fearful sobs rang out from the students' mouths affecting even their spells for a moment. Master Jean lets use the corpse explosion spell quick. Fanny called out suddenly and her beautiful face hardened upon seeing everyone become so forlorn. O oh, perish soul now will be the command surrender your body to me explode violently corpse explosion. Fanny and Jean both chanted at the same time and Fanny pointed at the man-eating monster that she'd previously speared when it was done. Jean pointed at an 
another fallen zombie warrior. Two violent explosions suddenly erupted from the man-eating monster and zombie warrior's bodies. The four injured man-eating monsters next to them including two zombie warriors who were fighting against them were all affected as they flew forcefully through the air. The four man-eating monsters were blasted apart with loud sounds along with the two zombie warriors. They all lay still and unmoving obviously completely done for. Han Shao's eyes shone brightly as he fixed them on Fanny. He was quite gobsmacked by the corpse explosion magic. He had seen clearly just now that the exploded man-eating monster's body had abruptly lit up after Fanny had finished her incantation to be followed by a frightening force. Of the four man-eating monsters who had been blasted apart three of them had died underneath Fanny's magic. Han Shao had previously only heard a bit regarding corpse explosion magic. He understood that only adept mages could cast it and that explosions would vary according to the mage's strength. Fanny's corpse explosion magic had been noticeably stronger than Jean's. This may have had something to do with Fanny's magic and using man-eating monsters as fodder. However, it seemed that the corpse explosion spell significantly drained their mental strength. Fanny and Jean's faces were both pale after casting the spell and they panted heavily. Up until now of the original eight man-eating monsters Fanny had killed one with a bone spear and four more had been killed with the corpse explosion spells. Although the two hate warriors had been impaled by the man-eating monsters spears they continued to hold their ground and resolutely tied up two more man-eating monsters. Only the strongest and tallest man-eating monster hadn't been unduly affected. It wielded a studded club and sprinted over like mad making weird noises and even yelling simple phrases like I, I will kill you. We've just used the corpse explosion spell and pretty much drained our mental strength. We'll be unable to use any other high level magic for a while. Everyone run. Jean's face grew panicked and he yelled quickly. Fanny glanced around and urged everyone hurry and leave. Don't get caught by these monsters. Everyone panicked even more after these words from Fanny and Jean. The resources on the side were all forgotten as they all frantically tried to distance themselves from the studded club wielding quickly sprinting man-eating monsters. Monster. Except although the man-eating monster's speed wasn't too fast it was still faster than the students particularly as the latter sometimes tripped over the skeletal warrior remains as they panicked. This resulted in completely incomparable speed when compared to the man-eating monsters. Fanny's thoughts were with the students as she urged them to leave and hung back herself. The tall man-eating monster who remembered that it was Fanny who had cast the corpse explosion spell and blown three monsters to pieces chased after her without a second thought upon seeing that she had fallen behind. Its club was raised high and crashed down towards Fanny. Master Fanny be careful. Watch out. Fanny behind you. Lisa Jean and several others all cried out in shock and fright as they saw the club descend towards Fanny from behind. Fanny turned upon hearing the others cries and discovered that the studded club was falling straight at her. The sharp points of the studs sparkled with cold light and the accompanying whooshing sound gave testament to the strength behind this blow. Her enchanting face was starkly white without a trace of color and her beautiful legs were suddenly without strength. A feeling of mournful helplessness rose within her eyes as the studded club grew larger in her vision. Clang. Sparks flew everywhere. Fanny's beautiful eyes widened as she looked in front of her a bit lost. Two studded clubs had appeared in front of her at some unknown time and the two had collided together. The sharp studs had already been flattened at the point of contact which still emitted some metallic sparks. She followed her gaze down the opposing studded club and suddenly discovered that Han Shao had appeared on her left. Both of his hands were tightly grasping the studded club that was completely disproportionate to his body. Veins had popped out on his forehead and arms and his face twisted in a grimace as he stared fixedly at the man-eating monster. Chapter 37 Ferocious Han Shao Brian It's Brian. The students exclaimed in shock he even Fanny was a bit dumbfounded as she stared unfamiliarly at Han Shao. She never would have thought that with his 170 centimeters height Han Shao would be able to wave such a thick studded club and block a savage attack to boot. While everyone was shell shocked Han Shao stared fixedly at the man-eating monster and reached out with his right hand to give Fanny a push. He said with an honest voice hurry and run. A shrill panic. Panicked scream rang out from Fanny's mouth. 
Han Sha Oh suddenly felt that his right hand had pressed on two balls of soft big cotton candy amidst her screams. He understood that he had surely pressed down on the wrong place when he retracted his hand. The students on the side were giving soft exclamations as Jean cursed loudly denouncing Han Sha Oh's wanton boldness. His heart lurching Han Sha Oh turned to look at Fanny and said awkwardly sorry Master Fanny I pushed in the wrong place. I really didn't mean to. Fanny was extremely irate and was about to open in her mouth to berate Han Sha Oh when she suddenly sensed the man-eating monster behind her. Its large studded club was already coming down on Han Sha Oh and she reminded hastily Brian be careful. Traces of dull honesty still on his face Han Sha Oh suddenly turned around and raised up the club that was bigger than his body. It whistled as it once more crashed towards the man-eating monster. Clang. Sparks flew again as Han Sha Oh didn't budge an inch staying firmly put like an erect stone. The picture of his thin frame clutching the large club was imprinted in everyone's eyes causing students to look upon him weirdly. Master Fanny hurry and get out of there. Jean's loud yell suddenly rang out at this moment. Gazing at Han Sha Oh in astonishment Fanny finally reacted. Her beautiful eyes still locked on Han Sha Oh she retreated backwards towards Jean and Co. After going head to head twice with the man-eating monster Han Sha Oh felt an overwhelming need to vent his feelings at this moment. He wanted to fully let loose with all the power within his body as a faint desire to kill rose in Han Sha Oh's heart giving him the urge to mash the man-eating monster into a meat pie. Han Sha Oh suddenly gave a few chilling laughs as soon as Fanny had vacated the area. The dumb honesty on his face vanished without a trace and his expression grimaced scarily. He raised the thick club with a darkened face and rushed headlong towards the confused man-eating monster. This fittest and strongest man-eating monster couldn't seem to understand why Han Han Sha Oh could withstand two of his heavy hits with such a frail body and was standing there dumbly as if contemplating something. Oh my goodness Brian must be crazy. He's rushing towards the man-eating monster. Bella exclaimed softly a look of incredulity on her face. Everyone nodded in agreement as soon as they heard her words all thinking that Han Sha Oh had naturally lost his mind. Even Lisa who knew that Han Sha Oh was merely playing the villa Gideon had a face of incomprehension utterly shocked by how he was behaving at the moment. Brian suddenly becomes so strong after he went crazy. This is incredible. Lisa is too amazing. An agony of the soul spell turned the cowardly timid Brian into such a wild person. Amy called out naively and looked at Lisa with emotion. Shut up. Lisa stared directly at Han Sha Oh and responded. At this moment Han Sha Oh was wielding the thick studded club and moved as fast as lightning dashing straight for the man-eating monster. The studded club whistled strangely through the air as Han Sha Oh grasped it tightly with both hands swinging it upwards in a curve and aiming violently for the monster's waist. The look on the monster's face changed abruptly from confusion to rage and it repeated its previous movement. It sent its club clashing toward Han Sha Oh as if wanting to thoroughly defeat Han Sha Oh with strength. Loud clashing sounds rang out continuously between the two studded clubs. The durable club and sharp studs were all flattened after repeated clashes. The fight between the frail Han Sha Oh and the hulking man eating monster became heated as the clashing sounds continued. Fanny and the others had originally wanted to escape as soon as possible but all remained where they were in shock as they saw how scary Han Sha Oh's strength was after he'd gone mad. He was holding his own in a fight against the man-eating monster and the crew stared gobsmacked at Han Sha Oh's strength. Dancing around with a club completely disproportionate to his body Han Sha Oh displayed not even a hint of apprehension as he faced the towering monster. Firm and well defined muscles with popping veins were evident on his neck arms and neck. In this moment his expression was hideously mad. He had a sort of dauntless valor that completely upended Fanny and the students understanding of him. In this moment the magical yuan within Han Sha Oh's body churned quickly and he felt a joyous glee in fully deploying his strength. His movements with the studded club became more practiced and not only did he not become tired by the repeated clashes but his vigor actually grew in strength. He 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 dot a few weird laughs emitted from the grimacing Han Sha Oh. The man-eating monster staggered backwards after another violent clash. Its originally wild attacks and enormous strength had started faltering after a few rounds of clashes. Oh, dot my gosh, is this that weak and cowardly Brian? Bella exclaimed and repeatedly shook her head in disbelief.
relief. I swear I'll never test magic on Brian again. He's too scary when he goes crazy. Athena displayed a frightened expression and muttered to herself. Lisa's expression was excited and her small fists clenched tightly. She would randomly scream beat him. Bach and others with a grudge against Han Shao all displayed fearful expressions after exchanging looks. They looked upon Han Shao with a bit of fear. He he. You won't get away. After another weird laugh Han Shao followed closely behind the escaping monster. The thick studded club suddenly swept forward and the monster's two legs were broken with a resounding crack. Han Shao's weird laughter followed closely thereafter and the studded club repeatedly crashed down onto the monster. Ghastly wails sounded out from the previously cruel man-eating monster. The monster's hulking body had long since fallen down as fresh blood continued spurting out of his body. The gray strong body was a bloody mess after Han Shao's continued beating. It was a bit difficult to make out what it had originally looked like. These violent and savage blows rained down like a furious storm for a minute with Han Shao. Uh oh suddenly waking up after the man-eating monster had been mashed into a mess of blood and gore. He was also startled when he stopped as he'd never thought that he would have such a savage side to him. This was the first time he'd killed someone but there was no corresponding wave of fear in Han Shao's heart. After the expression on his face had calmed down Han Shao turned to look at Fanny and the students smiling an honest smile he seems to be dead. Against his expectations the students as well as Fanny and Jean all screamed and took two steps backwards when Han Shao turned his head. Lisa exclaimed in fright and then asked Bree, Brian are you? Are you alright? Han Shao started and quickly recollected himself. He scratched his head and smiled dumbly what happened to me just now? Even I don't know what I did. Why did this monster suddenly die? You, dot you've forgotten everything you've just done. Fanny was also dumbfounded and then frowned as she stared at Han Shao in interrogation. Han Shao nodded truthfully and explained sincerely yes I felt that my brain started to hurt a lot just now and then forgot everything that happened afterwards. The man-eating monster had already died in front of me when I came to. What's going on? A. Weren't there two more monsters? Where did they go? You scared them off. Bella stared at Han Shao oddly and replied, Oh no way, how can this be? Why would they be afraid of me? Han Shao asked perplexed and with a face full of innocence. Brian you become so scary after you lose your mind like you're someone else. Even we were a bit afraid not to mention the man-eating monsters. Good thing you're all right now. Jean spoke heartfully and voiced everyone's thoughts. Don't just stand there. Hurry and pack everything. We can no longer stay here. Two of the monsters got away they may come back and create more trouble for us. Fanny kept her cool and hurriedly directed everyone to clean up the aftermath upon seeing that the crisis had been temporarily averted. Every Everyone returned to their original places after Fanny's orders and picked up the resources strewn all over the ground. The students had become more mature after this life and death experience. No one wasted time in idle chatter picked up and packed all the items with great speed. I think it's time to leave and in this time's outing, Jean proposed gravely after seeing that everyone had appropriately repacked their belongings. Everyone had recognized that their strength wasn't as strong as they thought after meeting the man-eating monsters. There would be more dangers as they traveled south and thus, everyone nodded in embarrassed agreement after Jean made his suggestion. Momentarily speechless the crew started organizing their things. They planned to bring back this time's pickings back to the academy and not continue adventuring south. But just as everyone was prepared to leave a desolate cry suddenly came from the south. The crew had packed and were about to leave but were all gobsmacked after hearing this sound. Expressions of greed surfaced shortly afterwards. Chapter 38 Another coolie it's the hooting calls of a frost eagle. They're solitary magical creatures. We've already hunted one down before why not leave after killing this one? An expression of joy appeared on Jean's face as he gazed at everyone and asked. The creature core of a frost eagle was at level 4 and was worth a lot more than a wind blade wolf's. Although everyone had expended quite a bit of effort to hunt the first one down that meant they were now more experienced in dealing with frost eagles. Everyone blinked after Jean's words after 
after which Fanny looked at Han Shuo and asked Brian what do you think? A large sum of resources is in front of us. I think we should take it. Han Shuo scratched his head and smiled honestly. Then all right everyone make your preparations. We will return to the academy after we've taken the Frost Eagle Corps. If our necromancy major can obtain two level 4 magical creature cores during this outing then the other majors will not dare to look down on us. Fanny nodded and instructed everyone to move out. When the bent heard her words it was like they'd recalled the outrages they'd suffered before. Each person started moving angrily following in Han Shuo and Fanny's footsteps towards the direction of the Frost Eagle's call. Han Shuo walked in front just like a leader and everyone else wore a naturally expression. No one had any opinions otherwise and subconsciously they themselves had all started to change the way they thought about Han Shuo. By now no one dared to treat Han Shuo as an errand slave that they could bully at their leisure. Their gazes toward Han Shuo subtly held a few more hints of respect and fear. The band of people rushed along their way following the Frost Eagle's cries. They arrived at the Frost Eagle's location after a while but were shocked by the scene that came into view. Under the pure and bright moonlight the band saw a tall strapping and handsome youth with tousled silver hair wielding a longsword to battle the Frost Eagle in the sky. He wore a simple paladin's robe and his shoulders chest and stomach were covered with armor that sparkled with silver light. His clothes and appearance made him out to be a knight. As he wove the longsword in his hand beams of milky white light flashed glaringly causing the frost eagle circling overhead to continuously caw out when it was struck. Oh my gosh a milky white fighting aura. He's an earth rider knight. Ooh. Dot he's so handsome. Bella squealed and locked her eyes firmly on the body of this earth rider knight. A boy crazy look rose to her face. Several other female students next to her also revealed mesmerized expressions their eyes shining as they gazed at the earth rider who easily handled the frost eagle. Han Shuo creased his brow also surprised by the earth rider strength. The last time Han Shuo and the band of twelve had confronted a frost eagle they had found it extremely difficult and had expended monumental effort before finally killing the frost eagle. This earth rider not only was not having difficulties but was handling it with ease. The frost eagle emitted continuous low keens after the white fighting aura was projected. A beam of white fighting aura shakily rose upwards until it pointed straight at the heavily injured frost eagle. The frost eagle seemed to have perceived the danger as it flapped its wings in preparation to leave. The earth rider's body had been standing on the floor until this moment when where it abruptly flew through the air in an accelerated jump. The long sword slashed past the frost eagle's belly as a wailing bird call sounded once more. The frost eagle wobbled in a listless downward fall. That was amazing. Bella's eyes gleamed as she would giggled with infatuation. The earth rider walked up to the body of the frost eagle made a flicking motion with his long sword and removed the frost eagle core. He then wore a faint smile as he took large strides toward Han Shuo and Co. He swept his eyes across the band and then Boder Bainley Knight Clark greets these noble mages. Hello Clark. You're so strong. You killed a frost eagle all by yourself you're so amazing. Bella laughed modestly and spoke gently as if she was a completely different person. Except that Clark's gaze didn't rest on Bella but stared at Fanny instead as if waiting for Fanny's response. This caused Bella to feel a bit awkward. We're students and teachers at the Babylon Academy of Magic and Force. We ventured out to the dark forest for training this time it's very nice to meet you Clark. Fanny's expression didn't change as she too slightly inclined her body and smiled in response. I see. I'm you also here to train in the dark forest. The magical creatures here are very strong and very suitable for increasing strength. I didn't think I'd run into everyone hey. Clark smiled faintly as he looked at Fanny. There was a strange smell in the look that made Han Shuo slightly ill at ease. Master Fanny the Frost Eagle has been killed by him I think we should go back now. Han Shuo looked at Clark for a few moments and understood why he would feel un comfortable about Clark's gaze. It turns out that Clark's gaze was a bit similar to Jean's. Although he didn't take it to the level that Jean took it to but this already subtly explained a question. This Clark seemed to be interested in Fanny's good looks. Yes yes Master Fanny it's getting more dangerous. For the sake of students safety we should head back to the academy. Jean seemed to have also noticed the threat as his gaze towards Clark wasn't too friendly. He immediately seconded Han Shuo's suggestion. Fanny nodded upon hearing Han Shuo and Jean's words and was about to agree when Clark suddenly said with a smile if the noble mages wouldn't mind I can join your group and accompany you. I think there's a mutual 
mutual benefit if we walk together and a corresponding decrease in danger. I wonder if everyone is amenable to this suggestion? Yes if a earth rider knight is with us then our hall this time will surely eclipse the light majors. Bella's face lit up in joy and she abruptly cut in without waiting for Fanny's approval. Some of the other female students hastened to agree after Bella had spoken only Lisa was unmoved as she stared at Han Shao in odd consideration. A few of the male students hadn't spoken. They didn't seem to care. After Clark's words and Bella's Eunice and Fanny started to waver in her original intention to leave. She had felt particularly tempted when Bella had said their hall would eclipse the light major's hall. Don't agree don't agree. He's smiling but he's not a good thing. This kid obviously has bad intentions don't agree to travel with him. Han Shao looked at Fanny and repeated in his mind. All right then we'll have to impose on you. We're a band of mages so it will surely be of great help if such a strong earth rider like you are to join us. Fanny hesitated for a while and finally agreed. Han Shao was exceedingly disappointed but didn't display it on his face. He exclaimed in astonishment instead and say I we came in pursuit of the frost eagle but you had already killed it. I the level 4 core from a magical creature gone just like that. Clark's face wore a bewildered expression after hearing Han Shao's words and he looked at Han Shao with some confusion. He asked you were the ones originally pursuing this frost eagle? Nodding his head firmly Han Shao said with a wistful expression ah yes but we hadn't thought that you kill it. Fanny was a bit dumbfounded upon hearing Han Shao's words and glared ferociously at him. Just as she was about to explain that this wasn't the case Clark hesitated and then took out the frost eagle core with some heartache. He forced out a smile and offered it to Fanny saying I see. Since this is the case then I return it to you. Master Fanny you must accept it. Except we'll absolutely accept. Han Shao smiled as he approached and had already taken the core from Clark's hands before Fanny had responded. He handed it over to Lisa who was standing beside him and said merrily hey hey. Clark the knight is such a good person. He's given us a level 4 core so readily. I think he'll be even more straightforward in the trials to come. Lisa's two eyes shot out light as she also merrily unapologetically put the core away. She nodded at Han Shao with praise and surreptitiously stuck up her thumb up a compliment. Fanny was going to explain but found that the core had disappeared into Lisa's pocket in the blink of an eye. She involuntarily revealed an expression that was neither able to laugh or cry rolled her eyes at Han Shao and Lisa after she shook her head but didn't say anything else. A level 4 core was equivalent to 100 gold coins. 100 gold coins wasn't a small sum to even an ordinary small noble. No wonder Clark was feeling the pain a bit after Han Shao had so easily taken it from his hands. Master Fanny now that we've been joined by the noble and generous earth rider I think we can continue south. There are certainly even stronger magical creatures there. If we have obtained a level 3 magical creature core then we can surely strut with pride in the academy after this outing. Han Shao slightly spurred Fanny on thinking if Clark dares look twice at my woman then he has to provide some free labor at the very least. It would be a pity to not use the earth rider. Fanny's spirits were recollected upon hearing the ability to strut with pride within the academy. She nodded and smiled charmingly all right then we continue further on south. Noble Knight Clark will have to trouble you to take care of us later on. Clark bowed humbly and smiled politely not a problem at all I'm happy to be of service. Since you insist on staying see if I don't play you to death. Han Shao was exceedingly unhappy with Clark's actions and his thoughts raced furiously in consideration of several evil schemes. Chapter 39 making fun of the Earth Rider the next day. With the addition of Clark the band continued their journey south in the dark forest. Due to Clark's involvement it became much easier to handle the various magical creatures along the way. Clark purposefully showed off his skills in front of Fanny and it was thanks to his great assistance that two wind blade wolves and one frost eagle were easily taken care of along the journey. Whenever a magical creature was killed Han Shao would swiftly appear and immediately remove the creature core. He would then naturally hand it over to Lisa for safekeeping absolutely treating it as if it was his side spoils of war. Even the Windblade wolf pelts weren't left behind for Clark. Clark wanted to win Fanny's favor and thus, 
although his heart bled inside he still forced the smile played along with Han Shao's actions and didn't fight for the magical creature course. The crew raised a bonfire at dusk and it the duty of grilling meat fell onto Han Shao again. Clark intentionally stayed with Fanny and wittily conversed with her. Off to the side Jean eyed Clark and would repeatedly butt in and use words to ostracize Clark. The other students all separated to either rest laugh and chat or silently organize their belongings. Only Lisa stayed beside Han Shao watching him flip the pieces of meat with ease. Brian I've discovered that you're becoming more of a villain and that you're very different from before. Lisa was holding a bright red wooden stick in her hands as she stirred the bonfire carelessly. Her bright eyes landed on Han Shao's body as she spoke. Han Shao flicked a glance at Lisa before responding faintly is that so? I am feel fine. I just felt that I was living too hopelessly and stupidly before and wanted to change myself. Is there anything wrong with that? Lisa shook her head and said no no. I just feel that you're different from before. I don't know how to describe what is exactly going on. Maybe it is because I cast the agony of the soul on you and made things the way they are. Laughing involuntarily Han Shao thought that he wasn't Brian at all and thus. It had nothing to do with the agony of the soul. Whether it was Lisa Fanny or even the other students and teachers it was quite funny that they all thought the agony of the soul was the reason behind his changes. Are my changes not good? Very good you're much better than how you were before. I was really angry to see you so cowardly and timid before so I was mean to you in hopes that you'd shape up but you always accepted whatever life threw your way and wouldn't resist no matter who bullied you. I felt that you were quite pitiful then and that living was quite painful for you. It would have been better if you died. I actually used the agony of the soul on you because I didn't want to see you living so pitifully anymore. Lisa thought for a moment and and then looked at Han Shao. A frown creasing his brow Han Shao looked at Lisa perplexed. He asked is this to say that you were helping me out of the goodness of your heart when you used the agony of the soul on me? Of course. Lisa's neck raised as she explained although I grabbed you for magic practice before I treated you a lot better than the other other students did but you were disappointing and lived out your days so hopelessly. I couldn't bear it anymore and wanted to set you free from this life. Look at you now you've changed so much that I hardly recognize you. Shaking his head Han Shao didn't say anything more but somewhat approved of Lisa's methods within his heart. The pitiful Brian really did live life so hopelessly and he long since wanted to kill himself but just lacked the courage to do so. Han Shao however was still unable to forgive Lisa for helping people in their lives. Bree. Brian. I think we can grill our own meat and don't have to impose on you. At this moment Bach Bella and a few others walked over from afar and looked at Han Shao with a bit of fright as they spoke. In these days Han Shao grilled out exceedingly delicious meat for Lisa Fanny Amy and Co. And horrendously gross meat for Bach Bella and a few others. After a few days of torture Bach Bella and Co. had already suffered from a few days of diarrhea. They had been cursing and complaining at Han Shao but after after experiencing Han Shao's berserk performance yesterday these people didn't even dare to complain and curse at him. They were afraid that Han Shao would suddenly lose his mind again. Now they were truly a bit afraid of Han Shao. Smiling dumbly Han Shao said with some embarrassment. How can this be done? I'm an errand slave for the necromancy major and preparing food is one of my jobs. It wouldn't be that appropriate for your noble and delicate selves to do such tasks would it? Appropriate absolutely appropriate. Since we're out training we should try everything once. Not to mention you saved our lives yesterday. We shouldn't let you continue to take on that many missions. Wouldn't you agree Bach? Bella forcefully laughed as she spoke. Indeed. We should grill our own food and not rely on you for everything. Bach's stomach had suffered for a few days already and he knew that if he were to eat Han Shao's grilled meat again it would definitely be half raw and half cooked. He hurriedly fawn with a small smile paused and opened his mouth. Brian I was in the wrong before. Please don't hold a grudge against me. If you hate me and come find me when you suddenly go see our or suddenly lose your rationality then I would be screwed. Alright since you all are so kind hearted then I thank you. Come you guys. 
guys grill the meat I hope you have a great time. Han Sha Oh felt damn good inside as he stood up with an honest smile. He took a few of the cooked meats gave a huge piece to Lisa who'd been eyeing them for a while and walked the rest of the meat to Fanny. The tempting smell of meat slowly spread out. Fanny had been listening to Clark and Jean put down each other with an impatient expression on her face when her eyes suddenly lit up and her tongue darted out to moisten her lips. A charming smile appeared on her lips. Master Fanny Master Jean um. And Sir Clark the night these are your grilled meats. Han Sha uh, laughed lightly and handed over the meat to the three people. Ooh, ooh. Black. Brian how come today's wasn't fully cooked this is too gross. Fanny suddenly squealed and spat out the piece of grilled meat she'd eaten. This time because of Fanny's poor eyesight and the fact that Han Sha Oh hadn't given her the meat individually plus the fact that she was in a rush to eat. She'd already eaten one of the pieces that Han Sha Oh had prepared for Jean and Clark before he'd had a chance to remind her. A. Master Fanny that one's not yours this one is. Han Sha Oh didn't know whether to laugh or cry as he he thought you were seriously in a bit too much of a hurry. He then quickly handed over the piece of meat that he'd painstakingly prepared seized the half raw half cooked piece from her hand and drew out a dagger to cut off the piece that she'd bit off. He smiled merrily as he handed it over to Clark saying with some embarrassment Noble Sir Clark this piece is yours. My cooking skills aren't quite up to par and although Master Fanny's already taken a bite I hope you don't mind? Clark said A. Hey, I'll just eat bread. Now how can this be a loud bread won't increase body strength and you're a knight who really needs a lot of body strength. You must eat lots of meat. Are you disgusted with Brian's lack of cooking skills or because Master Fanny has already taken a bite? Jean had long since known that those who weren't nice to Brian would suffer greatly when eating something he'd prepared. Jean was laughing gloatingly on the inside while trying to convince Clark with a righteous and dignified expression on his face. No I didn't mean it that way. Just that just that. Clark had a face of resignation resignation as he spread his hands out awkwardly. He shook his head but didn't know how to explain himself. He had seen Fanny take one bite and spit it back out and naturally knew that that piece of meat wasn't very tasty. As a noble knight Sir Clark must not wish to eat something that others have bitten before. I understand. Master Jean how about you take this piece? Han Sha Oh had an expression of I got your man as he first insinuated that Clark was disdaining Fanny and then passed on the hot potato to Jean. Jean started to panic after Han Sha Oh's words. He laughed shamefacedly and said no absolutely not. How could I take something from Sir Clark? Besides this piece is mine I'll go off and eat it now. Vague traces of sweat apparent on his brow Jean spoke frantically and hastily took the other piece of meat that was likewise half cooked and half raw. He headed towards Bach and Bella's direction as if he was escaping obviously intending to re-cook the meat. Modern Jean is such a humble person. Looks like this piece of meat is still yours to dispose of. Han Sha Oh smiled dumbly and planned to forcefully give that piece of meat to Clark. Clark had a pathetic expression on his face as he smiled with a wry smile and then suddenly spoke as if he'd abruptly remembered something. I forgot something please excuse me. Clark made like Jean as soon as he'd finished speaking and left like he was escaping something. He had disappeared without a trace in the blink of an eye. Brian you've become more and more naughty. No wonder Jean and Bach have been plagued with diarrhea the past couple of days. You were behind it weren't you? Fanny found it both maddening and funny as she glared at Han Sha Oh and lectured him. You've only realized it now Master Fanny? Brian truly is different from how he was before and has become naughtier than all the other students. Lisa chuckled lightly and then looked at Fanny oddly. Right Master Fanny you obviously know that Brian is purposefully pranking them why don't you stop him? That's because I also feel that Clark and Jean are too irritating. They hover around me and chatter incessantly keeping up a constant tracket and drag me into it. It's such a bore but Clark has helped us out a lot and is truly a good person. Fanny gave an evil laugh as she explained to Lisa. Han Sha Oh gloated inwardly when he heard the first part of Fanny's words but that gave way to anger when he heard Fanny say Clark was a good person. So that's the case he he. Master Fanny I know of a spacious pool of water nearby. Its waters are clear bright and clean. We haven't bathed or showered in quite a few days. Shall we go for a swim later tonight? Lisa you didn't like to swim before. How come you're suddenly liking swimming these days? A. 
because swimming works at the body. Lisa's delicate face reddened at Fanny's question and she responded quickly after turning her head to look at Han Sha Oh. Han Sha Oh's face wore an odd expression thinking to himself that although Lisa had seemed indifferent on the surface when he told her about the way to develop her breasts last time she had taken action secretly, he found it funny and his understanding of the female mind deepened further. Chapter 40 to think that you were this kind of person it was night. The moonlight was cold and clear as it scattered within the vast and boundless dark forest. The bright silver moonlight added a few traces of silence and comfort to the dark forest. Several crude and simple tents were respectively erected on the soft grass. After experiencing a day's worth of labors the students were tired holding murmured conversations or meditating. Han Shao surreptitiously hid behind a towering tree as he chanted an incantation. A beam of light flashed through thin air as a small skeleton holding a bone dagger abruptly materialized. Under Han Shao's guidance it flew soundlessly towards the tent Clark was residing in. Clark's tent was pitched a bit of a distance away from the students. Although he appeared humble and genteel on the surface apart from being friendly and genuine with Fanny his gaze towards the students held a subtle undercurrent of lofty disdain. His tent was also completely different from other people's and was a distance away by himself. The little skeleton was agile and its sinky black form melded with the darkness. It didn't make a single whisper of a sound as it walked and had arrived at Clark's tent within roughly 10 seconds. The little skeleton slipped inside Clark's tent after Han Sha O's command. A low grunt of pain sounded as Clark's tent spontaneously collapsed. The little skeleton figure abruptly dashed out and it fled quickly to the southwest. After a cry of pain Clark flew out of his tent in a bedraggled state. He held his longsword in his hand as he gazed around in all four corners then huffed angrily as it followed in the direction that the little skeleton had taken muttering strings of low-voiced curses. Success. Han Sha O oh laughed silently. Han Sha O oh cackled evilly as he closely followed in Clark's footsteps. Hidden in the shadows he wove quickly around the corners of the trees. Southwest direction a spacious pool of water. Strange curved trees lined the banks. Beneath the light of the bright moon the clear currents of the pool sparkled with silver color. Continuous splashing sounds along with the sounds of laughter came from the surface of the pool breathing in a few hints of life into the silent pool. Lisa have you started developing? Your breath Rest seem to have changed lately. He he master Fanny let me tell you something. Swimming can actually enlarge breasts. I only discovered this secret after trying it. Really? Fanny exclaimed in astonishment and then laughed involuntary. No wonder I was wondering why you suddenly became infatuated with swimming lately. So this is the reason why. Hey hey then we should swim longer today. Master Fanny your breasts are already so well developed. Why would you still care about this matter? Hey of course. No woman Women wouldn't care about this. I see. He he apart from swimming drinking milk and massaging during showers can all help breasts become firm and perky. This has been my experience. I've been doing this lately and can really feel the changes in my breasts. Master Fanny you can try too. Alisa you seem to understand quite a lot now but your breasts have actually been changing recently it looks like your methods are effective. But of course. He he you can't go wrong listening to me. Lisa laughed a light proud laugh as she spoke to Fanny. At this moment the sound of footsteps abruptly sounded in the distance. Fanny and Lisa looked at each other and Fanny frowned. What is that noise? Lisa has ducked into the water so that only her head was showing and was equally perplexed. She shook her head and said I don't know I discovered this area while I was collected firewood earlier today. No one else should know of this place. Fanny and Lisa were a bit surprised and about to leave when the footsteps grew nearer and a heavily sweating Clark burst into view along the pool's edge. He looked to and fro surveying the vicinity. When Clark saw Fanny and Lisa in the pool all three exclaimed in shock at the same time. Lisa was utterly discomfited and hastily hid her body in the pool pointing a frantic finger at Clark and speaking angrily damn it how could you commit an act like voyeurism as a noble knight? Question mark you're disgusting. No this isn't what you think. I found this place because I was tracking a monster. Clark was extremely upset and rushed to explain. Leave immediately. Clark you have disappointed me greatly. To think that you were this kind of person. Fanny also had a wrathful expression as her facial expression and tone turned frosty. Master Fanny I really didn't mean to come here to peep. Please let me explain. Clark was sweating profusely as he too hadn't thought
thought that he would bump into Fanny and Lisa swimming here. He thought it was a bit odd and hastened to explain. Leave immediately. Fanny and Lisa gasped and screamed in unison as Clark was hurriedly explaining. A resigned and wry smile on his face Clark sighed and slightly bowed at the two from afar. He said apologetically my apologies to you both. I will leave immediately. I hope you don't think that badly of me I really didn't mean to. Clark had a downcast expression and left with a dejected droop to his shoulders when he finished speaking. A round of complaints flew out of his mouth as he sighed and moaned that his luck was just too bad. Han Shao's surreptitious figure materialized from the shadows of the tree after Clark had left and he stuck up his middle finger to the figure walking away into the distance. He cackled as he said in a low voice trying to steal my woman. Go to hell noble night. It turns out that noble knights also have disgusting hobbies. Lisa was still infuriated and she snorted slightly with a face full of disdain. Men are all the same noble knights are like this lowly errand slaves are also like this. Only some know how to conceal it and others don't. Fanny also snorted lightly and said with some emotion. Errand slaves? Master Fanny are you talking about Brian? Lisa was startled and then seemed to think of something as she stared at Fanny oddly. A. Hey. No no, I was just sighing purely sighing. Hey hey Lisa don't imagine things. Fanny was internally startled that she had spilled the beans and hastily laughed in embarrassment as a cover up after Lisa's question. But Lisa's face was still full of suspicion after Fanny's explanation and her gaze towards Fanny was also a bit strange. She kept murmuring can it really be Brian? Han Shao had been concealed in the shadow of the trees and watching the two lecherously when he heard their words. His heart jumped but before he had time to reflect his eyes suddenly grew wide and his entire being speechless and dumbfounded. Fanny had slowly started walking towards the edge of the pool at this time and the body that had been obscured within the pool started to slowly emerge. The clear bright moonlight scattered over Fanny's flawless body. Crystalline drops of water on her pure white skin were like rolling gems beneath the moonlight lightly traveling past her satin-like body. Her upper body as revealed beneath the moon's light was so beautiful that it made Han Shao dizzy. Her breasts were full and upright with two mesmerizing spots of blush at the peaks. There wasn't an ounce of fat on her tightly toned lower body and her slender arms were as tender as the snow lotus. A head full of beautiful light purple locks were scattered messily over her smooth shoulders. She displayed a soul and heart stealing allure. The rest of her lower body was immersed in the water starting from her lower abdomen but under the light of the moon Han Shao could still make out sparkling white legs beneath the clear pool waters. This was the first time that Han Shao had seen a naked girl in such an extraordinary beauty at that. Fanny's transcendent beauty and perfect figure under the moonlight with water droplets slowly rolling off of it caused Han Shao to become utterly gobsmacked. His entire being immediately sank into a sluggish state. A strange sound suddenly traveled into Han Shao's ears and his dumbly staring self suddenly startled awake and started surveying the area. A loud panicked scream emitted from Lisa's mouth. Lisa was still in the deep waters of the pond and was pointing fearfully behind her. She screamed hoarsely Master. Master. Master Fanny Deep Water Venom Python. Fanny blinked and turned her head to discover a light green spiked back ridge of five or six meter long enormous python was quickly swimming in from the far reaches of the pool. A savage and merciless light was flashing in the python's dark green eyes and its heavily fanged mouth spat out dark green smoke as it quickly approached Lisa. Run Lisa, hurry and run. Fanny's expression had also changed drastically and she screamed frantically. But Lisa had been terror struck. Her originally fast-moving figure had slowed down considerably due to the arrival of the deep water venom python despite her arms and legs making splashes on the water surface. Master Fanny Wa Wa save me. Lisa's voice was choked up as she screamed in a panicked frenzy. Her arms and legs moved in unison in a bid to reach the pool banks faster but the deep water venom python drew ever closer to her. Damn it where is that Clark now? Exclamation mark Fanny cussed out of character for her and her perfect body started back making for Lisa's direction. At this moment Han Shao had completely recollected himself and gazed at the deep water venom python that continued to get closer. He hesitated and then abruptly dashed out 
out of the tree's shadows. He called loudly what's going on. A deep water venom python let me help you. The deep water venom python was a level 3 magical creature. Not only did its body possess strong attack power but its mouth could also spit out a poison mist not to mention its speed and advantages had all been greatly increased because it was still in the water. A level 4 frost eagle could only be brought down with Herculean effort from everyone. This level 3 deep water venom python would be even harder to handle. Even Han Sha Oh didn't feel completely confident but he couldn't just stand by and watch Fanny be eaten. He had to rush out even in the face of death. Damn it screw it. Han Sha Oh pulled out a dagger and his body flashed like lightning through the dark forest as he rushed towards the pool of water. 